Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, any comment on that agenda item? Uh, uh, just, just a question. Uh, is that also accepting the, uh, the notes from? No, that's next. Okay. Okay, moving on to item C, the consent calendar. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Okay. All right, uh, any discussion? Uh, just on the bills paid for me and me, I mean, there's a bit of overtime on the fire department, but the thing I wanted to bring up was the, I know it's going to come out sooner or later, the um, County of Marin, the design review application and Hansel, those two are tied together, I believe. Um, I don't know if tied together, but yeah, those are two of his latest invoices. Uh, is that, where, where are you looking? Oh, yeah. Oh, 3183 uh, and 3183. 3183 is the actual fee that the county charges. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And then 3189 was his latest invoice. Which needed to be for the application. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, additional materials. Anything else from the board? No, I don't have my questions. Okay. Any questions, comments from the public? Yeah, so uh, I don't know if this is the right area to talk about it, but uh, the PNR Commission uh, report uh, from January that was approved, uh, uh, let's see, what do I say? Meeting notes, whatever, whatever you call it. Um, anyhow, there was significant. Uh, distortions of fact in it. Uh, in fact, I think uh, there were very slanderous comments made about me, which I would like to be corrected for the record. Uh, there was a, a statement saying that there was a threat made, or a threat was perceived uh, against commissioners, and if you actually listen to the video, you can, uh, it, the, the question was, uh, so, Stephen, I'm going to interrupt because that's actually not part of the consent calendar. That will be later on. In that will be later? Okay, uh, fine. Then, yeah. then what I want to, uh, I'll talk about that later. So, uh, the question I had was concerning the art show expenses and uh, peers that, uh, I, I don't, that's art and wine show, correct? So, there was uh, uh, expenses going out and obviously income coming in. And, and I, uh, I don't know if we can talk about this now, but I noted that there was $1,000 worth of food. Uh, Luke got paid 350 for art show expenses. Robin got paid 350 for expenses. I don't know if someone else got paid 350 for expenses. All seemed rather uh, expensive to me. And uh, I really would like to know uh, if we're, uh, these art shows are bringing in money or we're spending money and how this money is being spent. I assume part of it is labor and I don't know how much of those art show expenses are labor. Um, it, would that be broken out, um, Eric? Labor expenses for art show expenses? <coughs> I don't think we had any labor expenses, but I have to be quite honest with you. And I would say, like, I would actually say, let's take this comment. This is, these are questions that I would expect you to ask Eric before the meeting, rather than taking a meeting time well, with this, because uh, this is not a back and forth. This is public uh, comment for items. Well, I thought we were trying to understand the expenses, and, and so know, that's that's what you do with staff outside of the I meeting. see. This is a business so, um, okay, so there's a problem because I actually have been sending in communications and not received responses. So I don't actually know uh, what, uh, you know, how you expect there to be staff or interaction when it's a one-way uh, one communication. Uh, lastly, I don't see expense, maybe it's the county of Moran, I'm not sure, but uh, you've hired uh, an armed police officer at the last three or four meetings, I'm not sure. Uh, that's not free. Um, and I'd like to know how much you're spending for it and why you feel that 
the expense is worth more than, say, a uh, new swing set, uh, handrail for elderly people in the, in the park, okay, so uh, road time, repair. Time is up, Stephen. Um, so thank you so, for your comment, so can, and I'd be happy to address your, and answer your last question. It's my understanding that it is $75 an hour for um, officers from the Marin County Sheriff's I'm department. sorry, point of order. Could you please speak up? I can't hear you. Yes, my understanding is that there um, is a fee of $75 an hour for uh, a sheriff's deputy to be here, and that this has been done to maintain public decorum and also safety because there are a, num a number of people who have felt threatened by members of the public acting inappropriately. So this is, we have not been billed for this, and if we are, I think that this is a fair expense in order to keep our meetings safe and open to the public. Okay, so, so, so this is not you need to provide a little point, bit more information point, okay, so specific we're moving on. to the expense. All right, so now I'm going to bring it back up here. Uh, can I call the question on the consent calendar, all those in favor? All right. Uh, hi. I'm sorry, you didn't end the. Uh, oh, you're right. End it yet? You're right. Sorry. Oop. Please advise us when it's ending because I do want to ask a question. Okay. Sorry. So let me open that back up. Uh, any other comments on my consent calendar? Yes. yes. Actually, my comment was why the um, officer, the armed officer who was in the meetings, his expenses do not show up in the As expense report. Said, we have not been billed. How we have not been billed for three months now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. Okay. And do you know how much he or she will cost us? I, did you hear my response? <clears throat> I just responded. No, I didn't. Okay. So $75 an hour. How much an hour? $75. $5? Seventy five. Seventy five. Thank you. Okay. Any other public uh, comments from the public on the consent calendar? <coughs> All right, just so we're official, let's call the question again, in case that was since that was out of order before. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to item D, public comment, open time for items do not on the agenda. Linda? Okay, I'm going to read this. Um, and please do not interrupt me and do not criticize me while I'm doing this. I would like to just read it nice and slowly and quietly okay um, there are many new items shown in the recent drawings that the public has never seen for the new uh, maintenance shed facility thingy and some of the new design has many inefficiencies that are going to cause more outdoor storage and less open space due to the maneuverability problems um, one thing I did notice maybe nobody else did but the drive-through inside the building is no longer a straight drive through it's a zigzag. So just wanted to make sure everybody remembered or knew or saw that it goes up diagonally through the West Yard, then it goes straight across through the middle of the Eichler storage shop building, directly alongside the restrooms and break room, the restroom and break room, so I don't know about exhaust fumes, but uh, and then it goes diagonally downward out the eastern yard. So that makes a big difference inside when you're talking about maneuverability. Both of the yards show no turnaround areas for vehicles exiting the facility. The east side goes into a swampy area, then down to the meadows, and the west side is near the horseshoe pits and near the neighbor's fences. So I don't know if the, this was intentionally left off, because there is something that the guys do now going down into the meadow turning around into the meadow instead of turning around in the mud and the swampy area where the big park truck is, is parked outside. And the drive does not show outdoor storage areas for vehicles and equipment and debris piles of trash and vegetation and dirt and maintenance stuff and stuff that goes to dump. So I would have expected that somewhere someone would plan where this these open areas for all the piles of debris and stuff that we have now because it's not going to fit in the, the building or the yards. Uh, the swampy area, which is about 30 by 30 east of the current office trailer, uh, is nobody knows why it's there or what it's from. 
and there's a long white pipe exiting near the top of the creek bank across from the swampy area. And from what I've heard, nobody knows, no investigation resulting in a cause for the swamp and the drain pipe. Um, and then I was also wondering if this possibly could be related to the two sinkholes that we now have along the pedestrian lane. It may be, the sinkholes may be a precursor of what is to come along the Panhandle Trail. So I think this area should be investigated because what if we have sinkholes you know, right underneath the new facility area. Um, there is not enough room for a driveway outside the facility and we've been told that there is one. We know it's needed, we know it will be utilized, and we know that the large facility which extends over on top of the existing panhandle driveway um, covers up the existing driveway. So we know we need some sort of a driveway because there will be people driving, including people. Um, a new portion of the multi-purpose trail should go anywhere except possibly at the top of the creek bank as had been drawn previously for a year and that's the way it is in the dry now but because of the building coming way over the existing driveway there's not enough room for another driveway and a trail for people and uh, if we do have it right at the edge of the creek bank, we're going to have lots of runoff, erosion, sediment, debris, kids running up and down into the creek. The open space is going to be very reduced. If you think about all these issues Linda, of can you wrap it up? Three stuff, minutes. the 150 foot long facility must be narrowed for the environment's sake. And the, the zigzag driveway through the building and and entry and exit points should be removed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other public comments? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm going to just uh, continue to sit down here. Um, so uh, we now are up to about thirty thousand dollars of expenses. Uh, we're tonight's. We're talking about the budgets and. Um, very concerned that there is a lack of rigor uh, and, uh, in the budgets. We don't know our expenses, we don't know our income, and we don't seem to be able to plan. Nobody has said anything about how much uh, they have budgeted uh, for uh, this uh, big project, which looks to be like maybe one of the most expensive maintenance facilities in Marin history. Um, Bill Hansel's uh, budget, or he, we don't have an approved plan yet, and we're up to $30,000, which I will note that uh, prefab units start around $10,000. So we're going at this a very expensive way. It looks like a runaway project, uh, something that we can ill afford with our maintenance needs of the pool, as well as our, uh, uh, you know, paying our, our pension obligations and health care expenses. Uh, I urge the board to use caution here. Uh, there's a lot of pro problems up ahead. That's all. Thank you for your comment. Anything else? Um, just a, a request in terms of the budgeting process and perspective long term if there's any guidance long term of what that looks like in terms of meeting those long term pension obligations whether it's more programs to bring revenue whether it's property taxes or lowering expenses or a combination of three it would be interesting to see three to five years what that what that thought process is to ensure that we can meet those budgetary needs. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Anything else? Okay. All right, moving on to item E, uh, district matters, uh, item number one, public request for dedication of district property in recognition of Jenny Holding. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, um, I have some comments. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure that there's anyone in this room who served with Jenny 
other than myself? I did. <laughs> <laughs> you served at home? At home, yeah. yeah. Oh. We delivered the meeting minutes to all the board members. Okay. <laughs> all right. No work meetings. So I appreciate your comments, um, and I agree with many of them. But I also want to point out that um, where Jenny and I butted heads during our service together was with her policy of offering enriched benefits to our unionized employees instead of salary increases, which has now put our fire department's future in jeopardy. <coughs> That's the one thing that I had a problem with, and we are now having to wrestle with. Having said that, I did work with her, and I worked with her closely on negotiations, with, with one exception, and also um, on personnel committee issues, etc. And I absolutely agree with your comments about her dedication, her energy, and her creativity. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to put it down as a note that also, um, due to the uh, issue of offering benefits instead of wage increases, we do have a very difficult future in front of us for our fire department. But otherwise, um, I am not going to block or in any way impede having an honorarium posted on a facility here. I noted to, on our way in, we've already given up the community center, which I think would have been most appropriate. Um, <coughs> But the pool is what's been suggested. Um, yeah. If uh, so, kind of going over some of the memo I put in here. Obviously, you saw the the letter submitted. Uh, and just to be clear, by the way, to uh, these are Miss Bowling's children who've driven here from out of town to attend this as well. So in a second, they'll have a chance to introduce themselves. I'm sure. Uh, Luke and I certainly talked and looked at areas. This went through the Park and Rec Commission. Uh, and what we had decided is one to your point in that you know looking at what specifically was requested here uh, this building as well as the rooms in this building have already been dedicated uh, in honor of various past contributors to the district the pool however has not there are a couple of plaques inside the pool one that just recognizes a longtime pool commissioner another one that recognizes a former lifeguard who passed away at a very young age uh, but the facility itself is not dedicated. Uh, what Luke and I had talked about was uh, and shared with the commission was placing a plaque immediately outside the pool doors in, mem in honor and memory of Genevieve Bolding. Uh, to be very clear, we're not recommending, you know, we're going to rebrand the pool. It's not going to be called the Bolding, you know, it'll still be the Marinwood pool, but there'll be a very nice plaque placed outside the doors that recognize her contributions to the district, who she is, uh, as well as a uh, memorial. Okay. Um, well, I just, I um, missed her by a year when I started oh. here, and so the stories that I've heard over the years, um, you know, Jeff is always a good curmudgeon. <laughs> um, but I think that um, I appreciate you guys. Um, well, would you have to introduce yourselves, by the way? Yeah. So I'll start over here and go with my thing. Um, I'm Sally Bolding Sutter. So um, my oldest sister's not here. So I was. we were born and raised. They moved in um, to their home on Miller Creek um, when I was, you know, still in my mom's belly. So, you know, in 1957. So this place, we were all kind of born and raised in Marinwood. I had a snack bar when I was, you know, it was the old, the old school community center, you know, working, we were on the swim team and I had a snack bar when I was 11 and we were, you know, so much a part of the community and the community center and all were part of um, the building and the saving of the open space and, and really the building of the community as we know it today. So, Ellen? And I'm Ellen Bolden and thank you for, for, um, for this honor of being here. Um, the community hasn't changed much since I've been here, just driving around. This is really a jewel, and 
coming from somebody who sort of stepped back, lived in some other places, and coming back, um, it really is a jewel. And the open space, the homes, the community, just the vibes and the feeling. Um, this is a really special place, not just for me, but I'm sure for everyone who lives here. And I'm Alice, I'm the baby of the family. <laughs> and I, again, I want to thank um, the board for considering <coughs> um, dedicating a, a piece of this property to my mom. And Eric, thank you so much for the last two years of really helping us out with this endeavor. My mom was so passionate about this place. I mean, she was the one who was knocking on the doors, trying to get people to sign, to get this place built. And then she saw it built, she saw it remodeled, and as Sally was saying, you know, our, our summers, this was our life, you know, and, and then I took over the snack bar. And took over. <laughs> so, um, we still have an opening at snack. <laughs> yeah. And we used to, um, you know, be in competition with the fire department because they had that soda machine, yeah. right? And then yeah. we, we undercut them on price and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, you know, with the teaching, the tiny tots, how to swim, and just, I mean, this, this, you know, my mom taught us how to have passion for this place, too, so um, it just would be such an honor if, if something could be, you know, put in her name here. Thank you. Thank you for being here and coming and for, for pursuing this and following this through, because I know dealing with government yeah. can sometimes be an arduous and lengthy process. Yeah. Um, are there any anything else from the board? Um, just as a newcomer, I've only been here about five years, and thank you for helping your mom build this place to where it is today, because yeah. it's part of the reason we purchased here. So thank you. Any questions, comments from the public? Stephen? Yeah, uh, I, I'd like to make a, a few comments. First of all, thanks uh, for coming here, and, and I think it's, it's touching. She obviously uh, put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into the community at, at the critical moments uh, in its history, which is great. Uh, any community is many people, it's, and, so, uh, and, and it's the passions of the individuals that make uh, the great community that we have today. Um, I'm from a part of the country, New England, I think Jeff's uh, from New, New England as well. Uh, the, the town I was raised in uh, was first settled in the 1600s. And so my scope of time and community is, is very deep. And I, I guess I, I w while I understand you know, this is their mom, and Jenny was here at the beginning, and I wasn't, by the way. Um, that we need to scale the the tribute in such a way that allows the community to have further contributions, because who knows? Maybe the, we'll have the Eric Drakosen uh, uh, wing of the of the building, or something like that. We we need to. I, I'm, I'm a little concerned that we're doing too many tributes and we need to kind of think in terms of long term and certainly Jenny should have something of uh, high, uh, uh, you know, it should be noted that she, she was here at the beginning, but I, I, you know, as far as renaming the park or renaming the pool, I think that's maybe, maybe we need to think about how we can honor lots of heroes in our community and, and make sure that uh, we also honor Jenny. So uh, I guess I'm, I'm a little concerned about the scale of what is being proposed here. All right, thank you. Any other comments from the public? All right, I'm gonna call the question. Do you have something to say? I do. Yes. Yeah, I think when this, um, proposal um, came up originally we were batting around benches and things like that and it sort of got caught up in that argument or that whole um, debate about what the appropriate uh, means of honoring uh, people were and I don't think it was um, intentional that we sidetracked anything for Jenny Bolding um, it was because we were trying to get a policy in place to really understand this and I think to some extent this is what Stephen is talking about mm -hmm. but having said that 
Um, it's very, very difficult for me, despite my earlier comments, to think of anyone who's more deserving of um, this accolade or this dedication than Jenny Baldwin was. And again, it's a little bit sobering, again, back to what Stephen just said, that the building, the community center, which I think would be the most appropriate place uh, dedicated to Jenny, has already been taken. So I have no problems at all with the pool being next in line, and um, I think it's well deserved. That's all I have to say. Yes. Well, 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 I'm just going to say, and they can certainly correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is Jenny was one of the key kind of drivers behind getting the pool facility built. Um, so the, the fact that Marin Wood has a pool, it was one of her kind of brainchilds and was bringing us in and uh, starting the pool commission uh, back when there was a pool commission and everything else, which is part of the other reason why we cited more towards the pool facility uh, just as a lasting structure. Thank you. Well, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on to item E2, fiscal year 2018-19 proposed budget amendments. Do I have a motion to approve? I make that motion. Second. Discussion. <coughs> Or Eric, do you want to talk yeah, I can lead in. I mean, I can. I gave you a decent uh, lead in memo here. At least I tried to with some detailed notes. Yeah. Um, uh, with that said, uh, I, I get it. This is kind of confusing. This is obviously something that we do every year, and the purpose between doing it is, uh, you know, last May when our best guess of what the year looked like uh, would would be versus where we actually are now so we don't wind up with two incredible uh, wide range of variants of, uh, especially within the services and supplies uh, one of the things that i realized that causes confusion uh, in here is when we were talking about the rec program i don't want this to be positioned or viewed that the summer rec program has underperformed uh, it certainly hasn't the issue with the summer rec program is that uh, we budget for the upcoming program. However, our program split fiscal year. So uh, what wound up happening is we literally lost a week within this fiscal year when the school district calendars kind of shifted. So typically it's always been seven weeks after the fiscal year, three weeks before the next fiscal year. Well, this year it's seven weeks after, but only two before. So. It all, uh, for lack of a better term, certainly comes out in the wash. And if you look at summer performance as a whole on a seasonal basis as opposed to a fiscal year basis, it's actually a lot cleaner just when you're trying to divide it into a fiscal year. Uh, we calculated that, that we probably garner somewhere around $100,000 of revenue from the summer programs per week, uh, if not a little bit more. But looking at where the numbers are coming in, I didn't think we needed to pull that much. I think we'll be safe. Um, I also want to note that this is the first time in several years we're actually increasing expenditures um, while decreasing revenue. So it has a total net uh, uh, revenue over expenditure, negative 65,000. Um, budgetarily, that'll still end the year with a net gain of approximately 300,000 from a budget perspective. Um, last year we ended close to six, the year before that was four. Um, 107 done, and I would assume we will still outperform this $300,000 number uh, when it's said and done. Um, we did add a little bit through current secured as well as interest. Those are very conservative estimates. I actually most likely expect those to come in higher, but I didn't want to. Uh, I, I tend to play with the budget conservatively, and I wanted to keep it that way. Um, Otherwise, if there's any kind of specific questions about any of the relative moves in here, um, this isn't cooking the books, this isn't fancy accounting, this is very standard business practice, and this is typically the time of year in which we do it. All right, questions, comments from the board? Yeah, I have a couple. You know, I, I come from the private sector, not the public sector, so excuse me already. Please. <laughs> but um, generally speaking, fiscal years are defined around the least busy time of the year. What's wrong with this picture? I have um, often <laughs> proposed a federal fiscal year. October 1st would be ideal for us, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, unfortunately, uh, every other it's a government the, standard, and right? the county operates on the same fiscal year, and we kind of fall in line with that and always have. Yeah, um, we no longer interface directly to the uh, county accounting system, correct? Um, 
not entirely. We don't use it as our accounting system of record, but we still rely on the county accounting system. All the property taxes, things like that, still happen within the same fiscal year. Uh, all of that goes, our general fund is still maintained through the county accounting system. Mm -hmm. uh, we maintain our own books. So we're not doing anything other than recording deposits or uh, transfers between funds or something along awesome. those lines. And then that's where they are, that's where we go to get all of the data from when they do any level of tax deposits on the districts we have. Mm. Okay, well, you know, um, I'm sure that part of that was just being cynical, but uh, <laughs> the other half is uh, just celebrating the fact that we are on our own set of books and um, some of the things that I'm seeing both um, here and in the budget for next year are consolidation of accounts and a little bit more sanity around how we are accounting, and uh, that's good news. Thank you. Um, let's see. The, I fully agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on being out of the county system. Right? Yeah. It would have been a nightmare if we would have transitioned with them. Yeah, agreed. Okay, um, building plan review for fire. Um, are we increasing the number, or are we forecasting and increasing the number of reviews, or are we changing the fee structure? Um, the fee structure hasn't necessarily been, I don't have a great answer for you, other than, uh, uh, to put it bluntly, ever since we've kind of switched and Santa Fe has been managing it, it seems like they're coming through in a much more regular fashion. I see. Okay, you're being more active about it. Okay, the reason for the significant budgeted increase in rec miscellaneous revenue. Um, is that's where I have been putting, have been putting all of, that's almost exclusive to uh, CSI rebates for solar. Ah, okay, all right, I did not understand that. And then um, I'm, I'm sort of having to jump ahead to the PNR um, report and asking this question. But uh, for all intents and purposes, it appears that um, the changes in the budget um, are either on the capital expense spreadsheet for this year or um, are being amended to account for surprises. The exception is this latest saltwater generator which I think we've been um, replacing one a year or something like that. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did you skip the next year's budget or are we still on the amendment? We're on the amendments. Okay. You know, because um, I'm wondering why there isn't an amendment if we are replacing a saltwater generator every year and we are adding a fourth saltwater generator. Um, because we had three and we're rotating through basically once a year is what we anticipate the need, and uh, when we add a fourth, it might actually be able to slow that down, but until we run a fourth, we won't really know. Okay, but we, we would pay, would we not, for the replacement of a saltwater generator, and we would pay for the fourth one to go in, would we not? Right. Okay, so that would be $7,000 instead of $3,500. That's my question. So would, it, would there be another $3,500 amendment necessary? Because it says in the PNR report, we expect to have a fourth generator in this spring. That would be 1819. Um, no, because we would have already budgeted for that. For the real generator. Yeah, I would I, have to, I'd have to look at it. So okay. To be honest with you, I don't have those levels of detail. So you're kind of, I, that's why I'm, you're, moving around between different topics, which is why I asked the question that I It has to do with the amendments. Yeah, I don't, uh, in looking at it, I didn't see any of that as needing to be amended. It, it doesn't go into, you know, the, the generators don't go into a capital outlay or anything like that. It goes into a pool maintenance, and when I, we looked at the pool maintenance, uh, there was room within that to do what we needed to do. Okay, all right, they show up on the capital expense report. That's why I brought it up. Okay, no further questions. Oh, I see what you're saying. So on the big spreadsheet that we put out a few months ago. Right, yeah, everything on there doesn't necessarily go under a capital outlay, but that's just all the things we know that also have routine, uh, you know, like the fire engine leases on there as well, but that goes under long-term debt. It's uh, things that we know are getting routinely replaced, and some things fall underneath that $5,000 threshold, which is when we capitalize and depreciate. Mm -hmm. So that's the number I'm using to put something into a capital outlay versus a, a, a different category. Okay, very good. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't following what you were saying. But uh, once, you, uh, once I caught on to the spreadsheet part, I knew exactly what you were talking about. <laughs> okay. Other comments, questions from the board? 
comments, questions from the public? Linda? Yeah, I was thinking back to t the time when I was working as a systems analyst, computer programmer for uh, an insurance company. And this kind of reminds me of what we used to call in my department, cooking the books. And I know that's not what it is, but every month what my insurance area was, we make manual adjustments. And that's what these are, it's like manual adjustments to make the budget numbers look more like the actuals. And what I was thinking is, if you keep the budget numbers as they were when you made them, like this month or next month, and didn't make any of these adjustments, wouldn't it be better to see, as we are budgeting for the next fiscal year, where our numbers were off, and then we would, uh, it would help us to budget better? I mean, when, when you're cooking, when you're making adjustments two or three times during the year in order to match your actuals, it's sort of like, Changing well, it is. It's changing the budget as you go along because you're seeing the actors, and so you change the budget to make you look better. And that's all it seems like to me. I just think it would be uh, a better learning experience if we knew at the very end. Is something funny? I don't know. No, no. I'm, is we're someone listening. laughing at me? No, we're listening. Well, obviously Leah wasn't because she was laughing. Okay. Okay. Are you finished? And, and I, no, okay. I was in the middle of the Go sentence. Ahead. All I'm saying is that I think it would be a better educational experience if we didn't manually change the numbers throughout two or three months, you know, the, the six months of the first of the year. It just seems like it's cooking the books to me. That's all. I just. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm finished now. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Can I respond? Is it okay to respond? I don't know if it's necessary. Do you feel like it's necessary? I'll be happy to talk to you about that offline. But thank you for the comment. All right. Any other uh, comments from the public? Stephen? Uh, yeah, so uh, I just first of all I want to understand what has uh, transpired. Um, <laughs> So uh, Eric is basically, he's, I guess we've been doing this for a while where we uh, have the county's accounting system and then we have a local accounting system. I'm trying to understand, so the local accounting system or, or the county accounting system is all the property tax, all the revenue we get from the county, is that correct? And then the local accounting system is for our business operations and, and uh, special stuff. Is that is that basically the way it works? When you when you said you 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 normalize it to the accounting. I guess I'm trying to understand where the business aspect because we do generate quite a bit of business. Um, uh, you know, I guess that's managed in house here. It doesn't go through the county's counting system. Is that correct? It gets reported to as uh, the county as revenue, but not the actual nuts and bolts of expenses and our revenue. entire accounting system of record is held in house. And this is not a back and forth where you're asking questions. This is a comment period. Okay. So Okay, so the, I, I, I needed clarity. Uh, so really actually the, the question goes back to earlier comments because you know we have lots of business um, we have lots of expenses, but we don't know where the, where the, what's net, what's gross, what are expenses, and it's not really actually being reported and it's not being seen as a budget except as a gross number, um, which basically does not give you any information at all on the financial performance of our business operations. Um, and I will I specifically would like to know more about the the art program. I, I uh, it just I didn't understand it. I'm, I know it's a good event, but I guess we'll wait for that uh, those questions later. Um, if you I don't 
quite understand if we don't have a handle on our income and expenses from business operations, how we can plan for the other, uh, uh, you know, our total budgets. I mean, it's, it, uh, you know, there's two books here, two sets of books here, and uh, that's, that can get very uh, problematic. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? All right. Um, bring this back to the board. I would call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The motion carries. Um, moving on to the draft district budget um, for fiscal year 2019-2020. This is just a draft for review. So it's not an action item. Do we have questions, comments for Eric? I spoke to him beforehand. Yeah, all my questions have been answered. Okay. All right. Any questions, comments from the public on the draft district budget for next fiscal year? Yeah, I have a, I have a couple of short ones. <clears throat> I, again, I'm not a budget person, and I try to understand this every year, and I, every year I think I know more. And I'm a detail-oriented person, which you all know, I'm very verbose, and I like the detail. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions about detail. And I don't know where you have in your budget the detail for a sheriff. Where does this fall under? Do we have a budget for having a sheriff in our office, I mean in our meeting, every month? Is that in the budget? Okay, that's one question. Second question is, I know that for the last two years there was like something like 35000 in the budget for the fire department safety utility pickup truck. And I thought, and I couldn't find my notes, so I'm very, I apologize for not remembering something from a few months ago, but I thought that a certain amount of money was going to be budgeted for a utility safety you know, pickup truck vehicle that goes up into the hills and saves our community from injury and accident and death from heart attacks and things like that, which two heart attacks did happen last year. Um, so I thought it was in the budget, and, and now it seems to be disappearing or has gone, and I don't know if it was ever in any adjustments. Mr. D, do you know, was it in an adjustment that you made where you took out that particular item? No, it was never adjusted out. You never took it out? It was never adjusted out. It was not in this current year's budget, and it's not in the budget that we put together now. Okay, thank you. And then the other one is um, about Measure A, and this is where I, again, I'm a little confused because sometimes in the billing, I see that you have billing for Hansel, the architect, and he's up to 30, over $30,000 for the last year in his billing, and that's listed under Measure A, but I don't see anywhere in the budget where you've got Measure A um, listed. You know, you, I, I don't see the park maintenance, the new park maintenance facility listed, and I don't see the architect's, you know, budget listed, and I know that you don't have numbers, and I know that you can't get numbers because you need to do a lot more research to figure out what's going on, and you need to get through the design phase for the you know part of it to see what's going on. But I would think that somewhere you would have in your budget something called Measure A expenditures. And I know that last year you did say when you were talking about using Measure A funds for the park maintenance facility, and I think at the time there was something like two hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars in the Measure A bucket, you were talking about possibly um, using the leftover Thank money to help out that. with the swimming pool, Thank and now that. I see you want to use fifty or $60,000 for the kitchen in the community center. We're going to move on. That's, that's, okay, that's your time. but I'm just, I'm asking where I is understand. this? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your we comment. Can't, I, 
This is Can not I a ask question. a question? This is not a question and answer period. Oh, okay. so I don't get any answers. No, you can ask those questions offline like the rest of us did. Okay. So oh, we're so I could ask this question of Mr. D in an email offline. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from the public? Stephen? Yeah. I, uh, Back to the maintenance facility, uh, last year uh, when you hired the mysterious architect who turned out to be Bill Hansel, our former uh, CSD director, it, it was uh, said that it was going to be, I think it was either 10000 or 12000 all in um, for his services and now we're up to three times the expense. We have asked for budgets, we've asked for projections. You have not provided them. Um, I, I'm going to call BS on not knowing uh, how much you're looking at. If, if that's true, then you're not actually doing your jobs as, as stewards of the uh, public funds. But um, I, I don't understand how you can ask for more taxes, how you can be thought of as, as serious, you know, fiscal managers, if you, this major expense, you have no idea how much it costs. I believe that you do, and you're withholding that information, uh, in, contrary to public policy, and, um, you know, people, you build a house, you buy a car, whatever you do, major purchases, people plan for those purchases. So, um, Guys, if you approve this budget, you're making a mistake. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Uh, I just want to echo uh, Linda's request to carve out the measure A inflow and the associated expenditures and how that relates to the 2019 and 2020 budget. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Can I follow up? Yes. Okay. Measure A is not incorporated into the operating budget. It never has been. It's a completely separate fund. Uh, it's held in a completely separate account. It doesn't attach or connect with our general fund. In fact, I believe last year, Measure A is based on work plans, not on budgets, and they have to be approved by the county. Um, they're done once a year, and typically that happens in May or June. Um, if you look at the archives, you'll have a complete record. It was either the May or June board meeting of the last year that went through and showed all Measure A revenues, all Measure A uh, expenditures throughout the years of the history of Measure A, as well as anticipated revenue for the coming year. That will again happen specific to Measure A. Thank you. All right, let's move on to E4, Resolution 2019-02, increasing the amount of the special tax for fire protection. Can I, can I slow us down? Oh, yep. I'm sorry. I, I, I would actually like to bring it back to the budget for oh, a second. Okay, sorry. Um, one of the things I specifically wanted to mention on here and I wanted to uh, get some board direction on, not necessarily an action item because it would have to become an action item later. Uh, within this budget and this draft, I am, uh, uh, you know, a management proposing a 3% cost of living adjustment to the base wages of the park staff. Uh, that's going to have a total burdened cost, meaning uh, for the year, everything that it touches, workers' comp, pension, tax, payroll taxes of approximately $6,500. Uh, before I continue to move forward with that, um, obviously I would bring it forward. It would need to be something that would be approved as a completely separate action item because it would actually adjust the uh, approved pay schedules, salary schedules for that position. Uh, I just wanted to look for a, a little bit of board direction on moving that forward or uh, not personally. Yeah. I can talk all day long on why it should happen, but I don't think I need to convince anybody. Okay, those numbers are already incorporated in the into this, into this draft, correct. Okay. So that would be, um, what's it been, two, three years? Uh, since 2016. 2016. Been three years, they got a 2% and it was several years before that. All the top step? All of them are top step. Our least tenured park staff is 16 years. Our highest tenured park staff, I believe, is 26 years. So they're not eligible for any other levels of uh, step increases, anything like that. If we don't make salary adjustments, they sit where they are, uh, where they're at. Okay. So 
that's something you can bring to the board for approval at a future meeting. I would have said. Good. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. so. Anything else before I No, sorry, I just wanted to get that out into a public yeah. setting. I wanted to make sure that it was very transparent that that was included in here and that uh, my intention is to bring that forward as a <coughs> schedule adjustment. Those are typically done in June for the coming fiscal year because you, know, you run the end of the fiscal year and need to be approved every year. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty, moving on to item E, the Board of Resolution 2019-02, increasing the amount of the special tax for fire protection and emergency services. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Okay. okay. A second. I'll second. Okay. Uh, discussion board. This is more housekeeping. Can I give you a, Eric, yes. why don't you? Okay. Uh, can I give you a two minute? Yeah. Two minutes uh, on what this is. Uh, this is all part of the voter approved special assessment. Uh, written into the assessment is a annual CPI increase. Uh, however, the board needs to recognize the CPI increase and then subsequently approve uh, increasing for the current year. So again, this is not uh, doing anything that wasn't already approved by the voters and is written into the vote itself. Uh, same holds true for the next one as well. Uh, CPI ended the year at 4.5%, and that's what it's been set at here. You can kind of see what the uh, adjustments are within the resolution itself. But this is uh, one of the, this is done every year. It is written into the measure that the voters approved. Thank you. Do you have a ballpark estimate of the increased income that would generate <coughs> on approval? And I'm assuming it has been built into the budget, yep. the draft budget? Yep. I can give you that uh, actually more than just the ballpark. Yeah. Um, if you look under park under special tax assessment 4120610, it would go from 366 to 383. So uh, roughly, what is it, 66, 76, 86, roughly a, a little under 20,000 total increase on that. And on the fire side, the fire side is a little bit trickier because the park is based on units and those numbers don't change. The fire side, uh, this isn't going to actually be a final number because I won't have those numbers until I get the final assessor's report. Uh, it is based off of square footage, but if you look at the same corresponding special tax assessment line for the fire department revenue uh, being you know, 4120610, go from 1.097 million to 1.15. Uh, million, but that also incorporates uh, the increases in square footage that were realized after the fiscal year when the special taxes were finalized with the uh, county finance department. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else from the board for Any comments from the public? This is for the fire tax? Yep. Yes. Okay. So, um, yes, I, I have something to say. So, uh, we don't know what's going on in the fire department, um, uh, uh, fire commission. The reason, ever since you've changed the reporting, and apparently, I didn't know this, but you don't record the meetings, which uh, I, I cannot see a reason why you wouldn't do that. Uh, we, they are spending a huge portion of the budgets. No, I'm, I'm actually, thank you very much, but I'm actually speaking towards the tax request, okay? We don't know how, how our money is being spent or allocated. We have no information, and until there's better reporting, we should not approve a tax increase. The second point I'd like to make is, uh, now that we have Chief Gray, I mean, I think the ultimate is going to be that we're going to be merging with San Rafael. And one of the challenges that's going to, we're going to be faced with, I believe we're paying more uh, on a per unit. So again, unit. We're, not, we're talking about the resolution. I, 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 I understand that's that. All but what I'm, we're you're, you're interrupting me again. Could I? Uh, continue to speak? As long or as it's just about the resolution. I, well, you're, I'm talking about the resolution, so please don't editorialize me, okay? 
That is not good decorum. Okay, that's not very polite. I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, we need to normalize our tax base as a precondition of being able to merge those departments. I believe we're paying more uh, per unit than uh, San Rafael, and we need to look at that. And so instead of just reflexively uh, asking uh, the taxpayers pay more all the time, there needs to be some planning going on uh, for the eventual future that we have before us. Vote okay. no. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item E5, resolution 2019-03, increasing the amount of the special tax for park open space and street landscape maintenance. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay. Any same housekeeping uh, as before? And Eric's explanation holds on this as well. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Mm -hmm. Any comments from the public? Stephen? Uh, since our uh, business operations are murky, um, the need for tax revenue is uh, uncertain and it's easy actually just to ask for more money but um, there is a responsibility as uh, stewards here to make sure that our money is being spent wisely and uh, towards the long-term needs of the district. Um, I say vote no on this because uh, we actually don't have a handle on our park revenue or part of, you know, the, the recreation revenue. Maybe you do and you're not saying anything. Any other comments? All right, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Great, moving on to item F, fire department matters. Item number one, draft minutes of the fire commission meeting on April 2nd. <clears throat> Anyone have any comments or questions? I just wanted to say that uh, Jim came in from pg and &E, and it was super interesting, and uh, if possible, I don't know if you could speak to the board. Point of order, I'm sorry, could you please speak up, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I said that Jim from pg and &E came in, and his presentation was very interesting, and considering that we have lots of power lines, I was thinking that maybe the board could hear, especially with the changes in the clearance for the power lines that pg and &E is going to be cutting due to the fires. Um, it might be something that we should be interested in, especially with where we're, our park is in terms of the power lines and various things and the open space and our neighborhood. But it was just very interesting and informative. And I'm happy to give you guys, I have the uh, PowerPoint and have it printed out. And, his commentary too, and I think um, Eric probably has. I was um, did, did he give you? No, he would have sent it to no. anybody to Chief Gray, and Chief Gray is uh, it's again, still, back up on it personally. Yes. Okay, but it was very interesting, so, and possibly we could reach out to him and have him speak to the board. Uh, yeah, and I can certainly look at what would be a decent month to do that within a board setting or even more appropriately potentially setting up more of a community meeting or incorporating yeah. them into some of the community meetings that they're already working on and establishing. Yeah, and that's what I, that was like my second thing of, mm -hmm. if the board thought that this was something that would be helpful in order of creating a firewise community and getting people more interested in participating in that, um, because those changes are really gonna change how we look at our landscaping in our yards. So that was just very interesting. And I am continuing to push that we try to become a firewise community and get the commissioners to possibly speak to you about how to divide up Marin Wood into multiple firewise communities so that it's easier to tackle and possibly more funds, according to the gentleman the firewise who can. Marshall now. Yeah. Is Chief Gray in a position to respond to email? Uh, I believe so, yeah. He is? Okay. Uh, How often he's checking him, I don't know. But. Okay. All my questions are really for him. Okay. 
Uh, if you want to send them to me offline, I'm happy to. Oh, that would be great. Okay, sounds good. Are you just doing the minutes or are you doing the whole report? Just draft minutes. Just draft minutes. Okay. Anything else on the draft minutes? Any comments from the public on the draft minutes? Yes. Um, is there any reason why the Pirate Commission can't uh, meet here and be recorded? I agree uh, with Savan. It sounds like there's interesting information uh, that the public could use, and it would be helpful to have that record. Um, when you went to this style agenda, I actually don't have a problem with that as long as there's backup. Uh, recording in, uh, of what's going on, but to just use this, there's absolutely no way of knowing what's going on there. And is that the intent, not for us not to know? I know there, uh, uh, she, uh, the mayor of uh, San Rafael has floated a, uh, a wildfire tax or a parcel tax and. Obviously, I would assume that Chief Gray, if that were to happen, would also want it here. So, so it's really important for the public to have a record of what's going on in those meetings. Um, and so, uh, I mean, you, you, you go from you know bad to worse on the, the this meeting, and it's actually quite easy to. To resolve with a, either a tape recorder or the video, I prefer video so we can see PowerPoint presentations. Could someone respond? Why wouldn't he? He didn't recorded? actually give a PowerPoint presentation. He handed out um, pieces of paper, so you would not have seen that on video, anyways. That's my. So, opinion. but you and would we've know. Never, and we've never had, but that I'm, I'm not going back and forth on that. That was my one thing. It's in here. Okay. And you can totally come to it. Thank you. Thank you for your so, comment. So, but not, the, the question back was, back. why isn't it being this, recorded? Steve, this is, not, this is not a question answer time, okay? So we can take this off. Well, do you, you find an obligation of having accurate reporting? Mm. Okay, Stephen, you're out of line. So your first warning. Oh. Okay. Any other comments on the fire commission on the draft minutes of the fire commission meeting? Let's move on to item F2, Chief Officer Report and Activity Summary. Does anybody have any questions, comments for this board? I just noticed that the percentage of medical assists are <laughs> staying pretty regular around 70 to 75 percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost like why do we have a fire department? For, for about 19 years, I served on the fire commission, and I had always operated under the impression that F-A-N-N -N meant false alarm, no need. Now it's being termed fire alarm. Can anyone in the fire department tell me that I mistake that for 20 years, some odd 20 years? Check with Chief Gray, I'm not sure. I did. Okay. He laughed at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a good one. Uh, any comments from the public on the Chief Officer Report and Activity Summary? Evidently. <laughs> no. Yeah, I. Oh. All right, anything else on the Chief Officer Report and Activity Summary? Okay, moving on. For, for the public? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So, once again, um, we're seeing the obvious unfold before our eyes. We've got this pension issue. We've got uh, debt. We, we're, we're, we, we have lots of long-term obligations. And yet, here we are. We're paying San Rafael uh, for uh, something they used to pay us for. Uh, uh, for many years, so we're just and we're the chief officer yeah. I, excuse me. I'm, I'm I'm commenting on the incidents. Okay, so the the amount of incidents that are happening in the JPA are huge, and so there's a story here. There's a there's we need to get a merger, or we need to find a new fire partner, uh, but. Uh, 
this cannot stand. We can't afford it. Long term, we're going uh, we're gonna to go over the cliff if we keep things going the way that they are. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? All right, moving on to the next fire commission meeting. It's May 7th. And now item G, Park and Recreation Matters. We have the draft minutes of the PNR Commission meeting from March 26th. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'd just like to point out that I believe, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that John Toon is the chair of the PNR Commission. Not the right. Oh. Yeah. What's that? What did you say, Jeff? I just, like um, <clears throat> I just wanted to make a small correction to the PNR um, yeah. Commission. Uh, meeting minutes that John Toon is the chair oh, okay. of the commission, not the president. Oh, okay. So. Anyone from the board have any questions, comments on that? No. Okay. Moving on to the comments from the public on the park and recreation minutes? Stephen? Yeah. So, um, first of all, thanks, uh, Eric, for uh, taping the park and recreation commission. Uh, I didn't listen to all of it, but I did listen to the first part where you actually had quite extensive remarks on the uh, Marinwood maintenance facility. Well, I wouldn't say extensive. You had more information that you, than you provided the, uh, uh, the public in, uh, pre, you know, uh, at the private prior meeting. Um, I, I, I mean, I guess this is a way that you're going to do the agendas, but it really doesn't provide us with much information. And I would hope that you could at least illustrate some of the conversations so we can follow what the, the, the business is. Uh, uh, you don't have to characterize it, but when you say, I gave a briefing on the maintenance facility, that would be good information because, as you know, the public is quite interested in what's going on. Um, I don't have anything specific on the draft, more specific on the draft minutes, but I do have uh, some questions on the report and the activities of the, in the park. Thank so, you. are we doing that next? Yes. Okay. okay. So, anything else, Linda? Oh, yeah, no, that's a really good point. If there was discussion, I mean, I know a lot of us are asking about the park maintenance facility and what's going on and what's the status, blah, blah, blah. If there's a few minutes of discussion on the park maintenance facility and the progress it's making or not, um, if that was going on in the park and rec meeting, should not that have been on the agenda? And what Stephen was saying is it would have been really good to see it in the minutes Although then the minutes wouldn't really say, the minutes would kind of say, well, we had a Brown Act violation because we spent four or five minutes talking about something that was not on the agenda. But I would have liked to know, and I didn't even know that the Park and Rec meetings were being filmed. Are they being filmed now? One has been. And so where's the camera? We have right, a camera in here? Uh -huh. Oh. Okay, perfect. So then, so then we should just go ahead and watch the Park and Rec meeting every month. But it would have been nice to have a little heads up saying that there was a discussion about the park maintenance facility because I would have watched it. Thank you. Can I respond? Yes. <laughs> The park maintenance facility was talked about within the context of the minutes from the prior board meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on you to can watch the video. Stephen, you're out of line. Okay, moving on to item G2, recreation and park maintenance activity reports. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, the big news for the month, um, well one, we hired our new recreation supervisor, Stephanie Moray, on, um, she started on March 22nd, and the pool opened to the public on April 1st, and so we've been uh, very busy with that, and um, things have been going well, and um, it's early, but I feel like uh, Stephanie is 
filling the role uh, very well and, and has been doing a great job getting to know the staff and, and all of the goings on at the pool and, and the department and well, we've been very pleased so far. Uh, the pool's been running great. It's been nice to see all of the regulars back uh, swimming in the mornings and um, uh, this week we had spring break camp and uh, the kids have been swimming the last couple of days and it's been fun to have um, it's been fun to have the sun out and have people back in the water. Um, Summer camp registration continues to be uh, busy, and many of our weeks of many of our camps are full with waiting lists. Um, we we'll continue to market the camps that are not, and um, so it's been, uh, the office has been nonstop with customers, phone calls, emails, and we've been trying to keep up with all of that as best we can. Our spring art show um, uh, was on March 23rd, and um, the terrific show, best showing of uh, people coming out to, to view the artwork that we've had in any of our shows thus far. Um, and so we're really excited about that. And I think there's momentum building um, for, for the arts here in Marinewood, and we're excited to see that. Our next show will be um, in the fall, I believe, uh, in October. And so that was exciting. Um, on the maintenance side of things, uh, we've still been responding to uh, issues in involving storms and all the excess water. I know the sinkhole has been discussed a few times or brought up, and um, as of right now, it is still blocked off um, with cones and caution tape. Um, we've been waiting for the water in the creek to recede a bit so we can access a uh, storm drain that we believe may be um, part of the problem uh, so that we can get someone out to scope that and see if there's damage to, um, to a pipe that, that may be leaching soil. Um, yet to be determined, but we'll be looking at that now that there's, um, I believe there, someone could, could now access the area whereas the water was uh, flowing a little too much to, to be able to get down there and, and actually get eyes on it. So um, that'll be coming in the coming you know, days and weeks as we can figure that out and we'll be addressing that as best we can. Um, and yeah, is there um, any specific questions about anything coming up? Parks Rec Center? Just curious, this is probably off the radar a little bit, but how are things going with regard to music in the park this summer? Um, as far as the lineup, I don't believe that's been finalized yet. Uh, I think we have a few acts established, but I'm hoping um, to have some, <coughs> something in, uh, completed by, hopefully by the end of the month, mm -hmm. um, have a better idea of what was coming, but yeah, it's been more time. Okay, great. Good. Great. Anything else from the board? Any comments from the public? Anyone? Um, yeah, I was wondering, now that we've got two sinkholes, a much smaller one, plus the bigger one that is kind of expanding, can we get a big metal plate to cover up the holes? I'm very, very concerned because it's right next to the trail, and there's lots of dogs running through there. And, okay, I know, I like dogs, I'm worried maybe a dog's going to break a leg. I'm even worried that maybe a deer will fall into it or break a leg or something like that. Okay, I'm just a little concerned. But I'm also concerned about children who might be running around and not see the sinkhole or might be a little too interested in the sinkhole. So could, can we talk to like a public works department and borrow a big metal plate that can cover up that hole, the, those holes, and make it a little less dangerous. So it's, a, it's a, kind of like a public nuisance or a public attraction. Is that what, a nuisance attraction? Attractive too. Sometimes. Anyways, that's one question. The other question I have is, again, it's the same old question for four and a half years. I've been asking about the entrance into the panhandle that's closest to the park maintenance sheds. Um, right now, it's, well, I mean, forever, it's been sloping. And as we've had our the contractors, the landscape contractors, blow leaves into um, off of the flat sidewalk into the sloping panhandle, the leaves pile up, the leaves pile up, the leaves pile up, and now they're like nah, 10, 12 inches deep in some areas. Right now, for the last two or three weeks, there has been a gigantic, humongous puddle, I mean puddles and puddles and puddles of water, mud that's four or five inches tall with humongous tire tracks in it. So it, and it spreads all across that entire trail. So in order to avoid 
me and my dogs stepping in the mud and, and I mean, believe me, it's, I don't know if any of you have ever been that way lately, but it's a gigantic mess. So what I have to do is kind of go up the incline and traverse the incline in order to bypass that area. And I know you're thinking, just don't go that way, Linda. Go somewhere else, huh? Just, I'm sorry, it's very close to my house. The dog likes to go that way. Um, there's a lot of people that go that way. We should be able to go that way. Why can't that? Humong and it's, it's huge, it's like it's gigantic. Why can't that area just be filled in? Why can't you just throw some uh, gravel on top of it? I would think that those tire tracks are probably from your work trucks, and I would think that all that mud going up inside your, your trucks might be bad. I would think your park workers walking through there, they might have the same problem that I have, or maybe they wear mud boots or something, but it's a dangerous, dangerous situation. Very, very slippery. The debris is six to eight inches high, and it's a big liability. Liability. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Any skin? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna just run down. Okay, first of all, pool's great. It's um, the swim in there. It's fantastic that they have it open. Summer camp, fantastic. Special events, I'm interested in, you say it's the biggest crowd ever, how many people are we talking about? Um, it's hard to say because it's an open house. Oh, sorry, this one went back and forth. Yeah, I don't know if you can do that. Oh, really? You, don't, you can't do reporting on, on the events? Because that's right. actually what I'm we're trying not, to get is, I'm trying to get report. specifics on uh, the activities that the uh, recreation department, so the and I, I asked previously, and you said I couldn't talk, talk about that now, then, and so now I'm really actually trying to get some of the answers resolved. Can those be resolved? Can you resolve them? Outside of a meeting. Okay, so are you requiring them to respond to me? No. Oh, you, okay. So, well then, we'll continue on. Um, uh, I would like to know, I guess these are separate businesses, all these, these activities. Uh, uh, one of the activities, I guess, is the lifeguard training, and I note that you also hire our staff out for uh, training, which is another revenue source that I never actually see reported. Um, as far as the um, sinkhole goes, you know, that is an attractive nuisance, and you, you get Measure A funds, and it's to do stuff like what Linda's asking, repairing the trails, uh, making sure it's accessible, and certainly damage to our park. Um, I don't know if it has been confirmed that there's a, uh, a pipe there, but I believe it can be filled, and I, I believe it's a, uh, it's a simple matter. You either just put dirt in it, or you, you lay a uh, concrete base, but it's not being done, and I don't know why. Uh, caution tape is not going to stop a kid from jumping in that hole and possibly getting injured. Um, and Linda's right, we've got animals to be concerned about and people as well. So I actually think we always hear about liability. That's a huge liability, and the hole's getting bigger. So if you're not addressing it, why not? Um, I've noticed that our park staff seems to, uh, will, a couple times I've seen them uh, leave at 1.30, 2 o'clock. I don't know what the circumstances are, but it just, it seems like we're maybe not getting a full day's work out of our guys, and I, I hope that's not the case. I like our guys, but uh, it seems to be uh, a very important aspect of your duties here is to take care of the park and it's not being adequately addressed. Thank you for your comments. Moving on to item G3, the date of the next Park and Recreation Commission meeting is April 23rd. Moving on to item H, I apologize for running a little behind time, so I'm going to try to go through. H1, Marin Lafco, election ballot for spe special district member. So we can vote on this. If anybody has somebody who they would like to nominate or feels so moved. I have a basic question. Okay. Does anyone have 
know or have any insight into these individuals and their records. Um, some of them are candidates that are um, seeking re-election. One is a candidate who is an alternate seeking a regular term, and the last one is a gentleman who wants to at least be an alternate, and I believe is almost guaranteed to be one. But I know nothing. Yes, sir? I have intimate knowledge of all of those people, including myself. Oh, okay. Um, You're wrong. Oh. Are you, who are you? My name is Luke Caius. Uh -huh. I'm from Mill Valley, and I am oh, one of the three yeah. candidates for the position. Yes, I oh. see. So we have somebody actually here. Would you like to make a I would, thank you. Again, my name is Lou Caius. I'm one of the three candidates for the, uh, the LAFCO position. I live in Mill Valley. I'm the president of the Almonte Sanitary District Board. And I'm also on the LAFCO board as the alternate. Uh, those of you who don't know anything about LAFCO, the alternate position has similar uh, authorities to the other members, the regular positions, but the alternate never votes. So during the four years that I've been a alternate, I've attended all the LAFCO meetings. I know how LAFCO operates. I was even involved in LAFCO before I became a member, but I've gotten to vote one time. Not a very satisfying kind of situation. And I first became aware of LAFCO because prior to that four years, about seven or eight years ago, LAFCO attempted to force the consolidation of all the sanitary districts in Southern Marin. Some of you might remember that. During that time, Nobody from LAFCO, none of the LAFCO directors or, or uh, commissioners ever came down to our districts to find out what the real story was. We've never had any outreach from any of the LAFCO commissioners. And so my feeling is that there needs to be somebody in that special, special district position who's a voting member who does do some outreach and who knows the issues and the people and the communities that they're supposedly representing as special district members. During the time I've been an alternate, I've gone out to the Western Marin districts. I've gone to the districts in Southern Marin. As you see tonight, I'm coming to your district. I've gone to Las Galinas. And so I believe that's what's necessary and is beneficial. So again, I know all the people that, that are on there, my, my uh, colleagues, you know, Jack and uh, Todd. Um, I don't see them here tonight. I don't know whether Jack ever comes to your meetings. Perhaps he does, and you have good representation with, with Jack. Lafco is just down the street. So you're the closest district to LAFCO. Maybe you have that yeah, interaction. Certainly we never have it in Southern Marin. And so I think that the fact that my interest is to have that communication um, is important. And so I would ask for your support in being the first position in the ballot that you have the right to, uh, to cast. And I'll answer whatever questions you have. All right, well, thank yeah. you for coming. Can I have uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Uh, excuse, Kaios? Kaios, that's right. Kaios. Uh, actually sent me an email, uh, uh, learned that this was on the agenda on his own accord, sent an email, uh, uh, offered to attend, and uh, I said, you know, I don't know that that's necessary, but you're more than welcome to, and he has taken it upon himself to come down here, and with that I didn't bore the meeting, but he certainly has reached out uh, at least two times that I can think of just uh, kind of supporting his candidacy towards this, and, and uh, I, I thought that was worth mentioning. Thank you. Indeed. I have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, I just want to see if I understand what's happening here. Sure. It sounds like Mr. Um, Moody is guaranteed an alternate position. That's right. Todd uh, was nominated both for the alternate position and the regular position. Mm -hmm. uh, there were no candidates to be an alternate other than him. Again, because I don't really have an interest to continue to go to the meetings without voting, I did not run. <laughs> I did not run for the alternate position again. Mm -hmm. So Todd is guaranteed that position. Um, and he did also, not really knowing much about LAFCO, mm -hmm. he also uh, got his board to nominate him for the regular position. Mm -hmm. uh, but Todd, to my knowledge, had never been to a LAFCO board meeting, but he did do that. Mm -hmm. Understood. So uh, would it follow then if Mr. Baker was the uh, regular position, you'd be out of a job, so if to speak? If, if Jack Baker yeah. is reelected mm -hmm. to that position, then I would not be on the lap board. That's right. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Sure. Just Jack. Yeah. Anything else? Um, so then, does somebody want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. I'd like to um, 
propose that we have Mr. Kaios in as first, Mr. Baker as second, and Mr. Moody as third in that particular order. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? Okay, any comments from the public? Stephen? Yeah, um, well, we're going to be under review uh, from LAFCO. I'm uh, disappointed that uh, we didn't, don't have rest, uh, uh, a, a LAFCO commissioner. I, I, I know you're, you're serving. I, I'm unclear what, what is it a voting uh, group? I, I'm not quite sure what this is about, but it seems to me we need as much influence as possible on LAFCO. There's two possible events. One is the merger of our fire department, and the second is uh, maybe the, the merger of Marinwood and San Rafael. So we really need to keep our eyes, uh, we need to know what's going on at LAFCO. We need to really have our ear to the ground. But Mr. Kaios is now, <laughs> maybe he'll represent us. So. So I, I, I guess I'm, I'm guessing, hey, you know, it's great that we have someone here, but I, I really would like you guys to step forward and, and know what's happening in LAFCO, at LAFCO. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? All right, we're going back to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Just, um, oh, sorry. Where's LAFCO? I'm sorry. I never heard of it. Uh, LAFCO stands for the Local Area Formation Commission. It was established by the Hertes, Knox, Cortes Act of some sort uh, way back when. They basically oversee all of the special districts and municipalities in terms of uh, delivery. Not oversee isn't the right term, but just in terms of delivery of services, uh, making sure, you know, defining spheres of influence, um, you know, radius as to where you go. So for us, uh, you know, kind of just somewhat to Stephen's point, uh, if uh, we got to a point where, say, we wanted to you know, formally introduce a, uh, a transition of fire service to Sarafell where we do relinquish our uh, jurisdiction, you know, our, our legal responsibility and authority to do it. That would eventually go through LAFCO for a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors. Uh, they have a commission, it's been, and I am sure Mr. Kios can speak better to this than I can, but the commission is made up of various elected officials from uh, various townships as well as uh, the board of supervisors these people are what's known as appointed positions the other positions are elected positions and as a special district which is what Marinwood is they allocate a seat as well as an alternate seat to special districts so uh, these are people who have uh, nominated been either been nominated or not any of themselves and either right now volunteered to serve on the commission um, LAFCO has had uh, uh, you know, speaking openly, and I doubt that Mr. Kyles would dispute me here, has had a, a lot of staff turnover lately. There hasn't been a lot of consistency within LAFCO. The municipal service review that Stephen was referring to is about seven years behind the mandated schedule of when it should have been done for our region. Um, they also look at uh, approving various permits, sewer connection permits, things along those types of lines for other areas in unincorporated uh, county. Did I get that about right uh, for a three-minute overview of LAFCO? It's a lot more to it. I, I would concur with everything you said. There may be some areas that I would color it slightly differently, but you, what you described is correct. Sure. Okay. And, and, and LAFCO is often called the most powerful, unknown entity there is in government because LAFCO has the authority to decide, as you described, what municipal services can be provided by what entity. So they can change property lines, they can change lines between fire departments and you know communities and cities and a number of things, but most people don't know LAFCO. They have the authority to do that. But with that said, they generally don't act on their own and go off and do that. These things come from requests from the various districts or municipalities or something along those lines. But that's why they do these municipal service reviews to look at redundancy of services. To Mr. Kyle's point, recently they took on a report looking at all of the sanitary districts, not only in Southern Marin, but my understanding was across Marin. They're trying to catch up on these municipal service reviews, which are very far behind schedule. As like our last one was completed in 2006. They're supposed to be done every six years. Um, maybe four years even but so uh, uh, 
a lot of people bring things to LAFCO and then LAFCO is also responsible. Every county has a LAFCO. So for the record, what's your opinion on merging Marinwood and San Mateo? Wait, I don't know when to get that. That just jumped right up for a cliff right there. So sorry. Yeah, we're not going to get into that right now. Um, but thank you for your comments and the, the sharing. Um, that was a good snapback. Um, OK, any other comments from the public? No. All right, uh, let's call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. OK, motion carries unanimously. Thank you for coming and reading, sitting through our meeting. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it. Uh, Eric, you have my contact info. If there are issues that come up, if I do succeed in getting the regular position, if there are issues that come up that you want to bring to my attention, um, feel free. And I would be back, happy to come back to see you again. For a party for you. What it's uh, worth, if you get on the board, Jason has been doing a, uh, a good job as far as being communicative and everything else. So. Well, thanks. Good to hear. And as you said, there's been a lot of turnover in staff. You know, the last one board well members. Rachel well after him. And, uh, That's right. And, uh, and so you know, it was before that. You know, it was Peter before that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, and, uh, Jay seems to be trying hard to get it back to where it needs to be. So, good. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, item H2, Mira update. 2019 low income senior homeowner tax exemption wow. application. That's right. Um, I. Uh, Unwitting, no. I actually volunteer to uh, be the representative from our community for Mira, and I've attended two or three meetings so far. And um, I primarily wanted to bring up um, that there are notices going out, I think three of them. One has gone out already, and there are two forthcoming that speak about how to. Um, opt out of paying the $29 parcel tax fee for Mira if you are a senior citizen 65 or over and have a household income of less than 82,000 something or other. 82,2. 82, thank you. Um, at any rate, um, we've got the form and the instructions in the packet, which will be um, a public record and I just wanted to bring that to anyone's attention if they feel desperately in need of having $29 taken off their tax bill. <clears throat> Otherwise, I just wanted to comment um, that if any of you have not seen the Marin IJ article on March 26, certainly feel free to go back and read that. Um, there was a, a more or less an expose of how far behind they are in the next gen system. And that was one of the reasons that I wanted to volunteer, was just to keep my ear to the ground on what's going on there. A critical system with some critical requirements, and um, frankly, as they started to, um, as they started to look at the design of Mira, this next gen system, which will give more complete uh, coverage during uh, critical situations. They found that um, their, their initial design would interfere with communications in other municipalities and they had to change it. That's part of the reason why they're behind. Others were, frankly, incomplete requirements and having to go back to the negotiating table with the vendor and, and um, get those fixed. But at any rate, um, once again, if you have questions about where this has gone, the Moran IJ 3.26.19 front page article gives you at least the IJ's opinion of what's going on. And some of it is actually pretty close to correct. That's it. Thank you. Anything for Jeff? Comments from the public? Yeah. Um, I, I don't see where I read it, but it, I, Chief Gray made some comment that the radios here uh, uh, in Marinwood are not up to snuff. I'm just wondering, is that all, uh, I, and I, I can't see it, so I, I, I'm not even sure that it, he said it, but, but, uh, but all our radios, all our uh, emergency services radios go through Mira. Mira, Mira is the administrator for everything. Um, is that how it works? I, we have a, um, I, I, we have, more than one set of radios, right? 
We have Mira, Mira has radios that allow us to get into, it's a trunk system, it allows um, our fire department to get in a group and speak to other fire departments in order to coordinate their activities during a crisis. I was just wondering if there's two sets, right, so, okay, so, so you're saying that there is two sets of technology. We have our own radios as well. All right. Um, any other comments from the public? Okay, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. Do we, uh, item H3, request for future meet meeting agenda items. Does anyone from the board have anything? I have nothing. Okay. Anything from the public? Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if, if, sure. Financial accountability is really critical here. I, uh, the more I look at the budget, the more I, I'm, I'm scratch my head. I don't know what's going on in the district, and it just really terribly concerns me. Um, so I'd like to see uh, that. I'd like to see a, a, a rigorous analysis of our business, and I would like that to be a subject that you take a look at. And also uh, the care uh, of our parks, because I don't think our maintenance standards are, I, I, as, I, I hate to be negative here, but I think they're probably the lowest standards of any um, parks uh, uh, in the area. If you look at the uh, county parks and you look at San Rafael, it seems like they would not allow some of the stuff that that happens in our tiny 14-acre park, and uh, it's nice having having flowers, but we need to also maintain our trails in open space, and that has been often overlooked. So, I, I would really like a, a, a meeting to address how we are going to uh, uh, properly uh, uh, manage our our open space and our parks. Last month, we had the best Okay, thank you. Anything else? Okay, moving on to recognitions, item I. Any recognition, so not recognitions and board member items of interest. Does anybody have anything? Not this one. No. Nope. Okay, any comments from the public? All right. Moving on to item J. Do I have a motion Bye. to adjourn? So all right, second. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.